The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. That was an accident. What's good, everybody? Welcome to Sooner or Later Sports Show. I am your host, Jay. Thank you all for pulling up here on the YouTube channel as well as listening wherever podcasts are downloaded and listen to. While you're there, please like, subscribe, rate, review, give us five stars. You don't think we deserve it? So give us five anyway and gift it. And so we've got a special episode today with the massive gauntlet of Sooner folks. We're going to talk about some 2026 and 2027 offers, a recent set of commitments, um, a phone that came down that y'all are freaking out about, and fall camp notes. And so let me bring the folks in. Gentlemen, we have jp and trav from the jp and trav show they are our distinguished guests for the night gentlemen how are you doing yeah i'm feeling good i'm feeling good you know blessed to be here i know Sooner nation may not be feeling that way right now but we'll, we'll get into that that's a fair yeah, point yeah I'm, I'm i'm feeling great you know these uh these last couple weekends you know i was at the lake uh yesterday and uh came back this morning i mean it's Last couple of weekends before the season starts, and, and once the season starts, all my weekends are, are taken up. So I'm I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the last bit we have. I'm on that same boat. Coop, speak to the people. How you doing today? Man, um, you know this is a day we waited for a, a date, and now we are sitting here. Uh, obviously, stuff starts rolling through. Um, but guys, come on now. We're, we got fall camp. If y'all saw that hype video. Uh, you know, that, I mean, you, you can't not get excited about that. And, uh, you know, just some of the stuff that you're hearing, um, you know, everybody's scared about the offense and the receivers, man, it's a uh, preseason football's on. You're seeing Aaron, Ro no, not Aaron Rodgers Cause he's never going to play Pat Mahomes starting <laughs> up tonight. So it's a, uh, it, it's, it's in the water. That is true. That is true. And we've got, of course, all the people in the uh, chat and Jesus, they've already talked, talking about it. So I wanted to start and really dive into this 2026 and 2027 set of offers we got because they're exciting yeah. moments to talk about, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to bury the lead. We're going to dive into the most important thing that all y'all are freaking out about is this. Williams Winery has his commitment coming up tomorrow, 3 p.m. at his school gym. Everyone's excited about it. He is the consensus top number three player in the country. Honestly, by the time the cycle's done, he will be number one. So we just saw a whole bunch of flips of crystal balls, predictions, future cash, all of that just changed literally within the last two hours. And it looks like Missouri is taking the lead. And I'm going to start with this. We're going to pass it on to the panel. First and foremost, no matter who wins this, if it's Oklahoma, if it's Missouri, hell, if it's Georgia, I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it a buck. This recruitment is not over. This is going to national signing day. Please believe everybody wants him because he is a generational talent, potentially. So because of that, am I stressed about tomorrow? Not really, because I think everybody's going to continue to shoot their shots. I'll put it to you like this. This will be the helping, helping piece, too. If Oklahoma does win his commitment tomorrow, official visits are out the door. If Oklahoma does not win tomorrow, he will take an official visit at Oklahoma during the season. So keep that in mind. Let me pass this to the panel. JP, we're going to start with you. What you thinking about this? Yeah, man. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, we were talking about it before we came on here. Um, recruits are people. Like, y'all got to get get out of this mode that they're robots and, you know, they're going to make a decision to where um, what, what you want them to do. Like, at the end of the day, if he decides to go to Missouri because he wants to be close to home, and that's what he decides. Now, if we truly feel like he's looking at, what man, where's the better program? Where am I probably going to get developed? We all know that's Oklahoma over Missouri. And so even if he does end up going there um, or committing there, I will say tomorrow, uh, as Jay mentioned earlier, the recruitment's not over. Uh, we're still going to be pushing. He can still take an official visit, et cetera. Um, but, you know, this notion that, uh, oh, you can't close, top base can't do this, and, you know, this or that, it – it just is ridiculous in my opinion. So I, I still think there's a good shot that, oh, you could still do this thing. I mean, there's there's still, uh, you know, what, 18 hours left <laughs> until he commits. Uh, we, we've we seen what happened with Peyton Bowen. You know, ever ever since then, I'm not 
I'm not putting OU at anything. So that's where I'm at. Got you. Trav, what you feeling? Well, first and foremost, I'm glad the decision's tomorrow because, you know, the uh, – you know, the daily messages of how do you feel today about it? How do you feel today about it? I don't know. We haven't got an update today. Wait. So if we haven't got an update, that means things bad are happening. You're like, bad things are happening, right? We haven't heard from these people. We haven't heard. Y'all, chill. These kids don't even know. Their ki- the kids don't give new information every day. The coaches don't give information every day. Just keep, just, just keep calm, man. So, um, I mean, obviously, it's never – I'm not going to get on here and say – it's a good sign that all the crystal balls and future casts and whatnot are going Missouri's favor. Like that's not a good sign, right? I'd much rather them go OU's favor. Um, we've seen a couple times this cycle where they've been wrong on that. We've seen Fong been wrong uh, a, a couple of times, but it is what it is. It's going to last until um, signing day. I am confident in saying that if this were fully Williams decision, that he would be committing to Oklahoma if it's up to Williams' mom, then she will be taking the – I mean, uh, committing to uh, Missouri. Um, so, we'll just – we'll see tomorrow who's got more pull in the situation. If mom's got more pull, it goes to Missouri. <laughs> Williams has more pull, he'll go to OU. So, um, I do want to, you know, calm some people that have been, you know, taking the sentiment of, Man, I had one person tell me it's a fireable offense for Miguel Chavis to lose a recruitment to Missouri, that we should fire Miguel Chavis if we if we lose a recruitment to Missouri. Um, I think it's important to remember that this is the, some would say, the top-ranked player in the entire country. So if, if Missouri gets this commitment, I don't see that it's that bad of a look. Like, people, people are like, oh, horrendous look if you lose well georgia would have lost him at that point you know oregon would have lost him at that point tennessee would have lost him at that point alabama would have lost him at that point all these other all these other teams would have also lost out to him so any ou fans that say oh terrible look for ou those that's your own insecurity talking that's that's your own bedwetting that's all that because i promise you every other fan base in the country that doesn't get him isn't sitting there going, man, we got to get rid of our defensive ends coach. Like, and, 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 and a second thing, not every bad thing that happens to you in life can be blamed or compared to David Hicks. Like, stop letting him hurt y'all, man, please. You stub your toe. <laughs> and like, reminds me just the David Hicks situation. Like some of you get rear ended and say, reminds me just the David Hicks situation. I mean, Hicks some of you get, go to a restaurant, get an overcooked steak, and say, it's David Hicks all over again. Like, at some point, like, y'all got to move on for your own peace. For your own peace. I, I promise you, you'll be much better off if you don't consistently look through the David Hicks recruitment as how it applies to every bad thing that happens in your life. Yep. Great to say. Um, cool. I'm going to let you go in because right. I've got a couple things to add. Yeah. Let's look at facts, guys. Okay, um, you know, we, we've talked about the family being, you know, pretty centric around honor. And, you know, we, we've talked about, you know, with the, the, him being grounded and not being able to make one of the trips, um, you know, or him being prevented from going. Um, you know, there is, um, there's a lot to that. Uh, you know, the, the person who is, you know, with 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 coach up there he is he is you know he is pulling OU as, as strong as you can but at, at some point you got to let the kid make his decision right people got to step out and um I, I think i heard it on another place where you know when, when if it was up to the kids a lot would be better um but you know when the when the adults get in the room it starts flipping stuff on its head um so uh, you know, I, I personally am going to believe that a lot of the NIL talk and it, that's in that's Missouri's play is the NIL thing in close to home. And, um, you know, we've got uh, we've we're dropping bags, too. Um, we are being competitive with that. Uh, you know, today there's conversations going on, you know, use making their pitch. Um, you know, I, I got to say that there's a lot of. um there's a lot of, uh, you know, continued uh, relationships at that point. You you can't press and, 
quit doing what you've been doing this entire time between Venables, Bates, and Chavis. Uh, number two, relationships, right? He's got relationships, you know, between PJ, between Caden Green, uh, Kamora Moore, you know, is already committed for the 25 class. And, um, you know, I've had folks pinging me, ask Kamora, ask Kamora. Well, what's he say? Kamora did his recruitment. His is done, uh, you know, hopefully. And so it there there it is. But um, the he wants to come and be around other people who are going to be on that defensive line. And he's not going to be the only guy that people can game plan. When we talked to Nigel on the Hall of Fame uh, podcast, that was one of his big deals was he did not want to go somewhere and, you know, you can game plan for one guy. So um, this is another piece. Guys, this is what's going to happen when you are throwing your hat in the ring with all these teams, with these super high-end elite guys. Lincoln pulled a lot of guys, a lot of offensive weapons, um, because obviously he had a reputation going for himself. Um, when, we, when you're in for big defensive linemen, big linebackers, safeties, corners, uh, you know, even linebackers, this is what's going to happen. You're going to have these fights, and these fights are going to be there. And guess what? We're going to feel really, really good, and we're going to lean in on it, and we're not going to catch them all. Um, you know, that, that, that just – it is what it is. That being said, I think that if he does, you know, commit to Missouri – they're going to they're going to have a losing season this year. That schedule is brutal. They're going to have a losing. They didn't get Georgia's schedule. They're going to they're, you know, that that's going to be four straight losing seasons and people aren't going to keep him in camp or, or keep uh Drinkowitz in camp because uh, you know, because he got Williams when one area. Um that's just not going to be it. So, um I, I would say, you know, tune in, be respectful again, you know, if he does commit to OU, don't leave Missouri alone that you don't need to poke the dead, you know, the dead, the dead animal in the middle of the street, just leave them alone. Right. Cause the last thing you need is that drop. List. All right. So, yeah, no, you're, you're y'all are all spot on. I've got one thing I want to add to this and we're going to move, move on into some, you know, happy topics and some good stuff and, you know, unicorns and butterflies and all of that crap. But remember this, we had a commitment on the fifth KJ Bolden. He had four teams crystal balled him to Georgia, including Will Fong. He picked Florida State. So I want y'all to understand, not everybody has the sources you think at that national level. What makes it even funnier, a Knowles insider picked Georgia also like a month before. Didn't even flip his, uh, his uh, CB. So because we know how quiet nearing them have been, how we really ain't seen no interviews, seen a few, you know, quotes here or there. Look at the facts. Look at everything. They just, they move different. So if that's the case, if they're just keeping quiet, they're probably told both teams that they're in. And so Missouri's excited and they probably already told Georgia they're out. And so Georgia's obviously leaning into the local school because proximity does typically win for folks. So keep that in mind. Don't stress. If it... I still anticipate Oklahoma. If it ain't, the recruitment's not over. So let's yeah, move on to some good stuff. But go ahead, Trav. Well, wrap it up. I think that's important. Like, recruitment's not over. Now, with, you know, if, if it's a situation where certain people in the family, you know, want that financial security, um, that might be a little tougher because at that point, you're not committing to drink. You're committing to the NIL, right? Because so if they fire drink, it doesn't matter. Them checks are still cashing, baby. So maybe that's part of the sale too. All of us, all of us OU fans are saying, well, they're going to fire drink. Drink's no good. Drink's a 500 coach or worse. Like he's, he's, he's no good. He's goofy. Like, and when are sitting back going, yeah, we know. We don't care about drink. We care about that cash. So uh, one thing I want to bring up, I'm sorry to single you out, Seth, but Luther Burden, Winery, Missouri 2, OU 0. You don't have to go very far back to realize that Caden Green and P.J. Adabare, Missouri, both wanted them badly. You don't really have to go back. Jaden Nickens had a Missouri offer, and he was the third-ranked receiver offer that they had in the 2025 class. Like, you can't just focus on the losses without giving OU the credit. We literally just landed a five-star out of the same area. I mean, just landed Caden Green, and Mizzou wanted him bad. So – you, I mean, you can be as negative as you want. That's your own personal life. 
But I just want anybody reading the comments to not be, you know, moved by the Missouri 2 OU 0 because it's simply not true. You literally just have to go back to last year's cycle to understand that. We literally just took two people out of their backyard. And if you're right. only if you're saying, man, four Missouri kids, you know, four Missouri kids, two defensive linemen, one wide receiver, and uh, um, one offensive lineman, and we and we pulled two of them out out of their place. I mean, hey, batting five hundred on blue chippers out of uh, their own backyard that ain't too bad. And it's not even and it's not even a guarantee that you know when Ari goes to. Missouri. And, and again, I know we keep operating under that, but the idea that Missouri is too and OU is nothing, you know, in, in recruiting battles is simply just negativity. It's just, it's just doomerism. It's, it's all it is because it's not based in actual reality. Yeah. We got to cut the doom out on that part. You're, you're, you're straight up. And, and Seth, we don't know Seth, like for real, we're not churching it up. We have no clue because he's gone quiet on everybody. He went quiet on his coach. He's been quiet. Everybody knows that he's just gone quiet which is who they are. This is which who he is. And so, and Travis, you said it perfectly. We got PJ out of who is a five star plus. He was a five star on all recruiting boards and he's here and they're close friends. So either they're going to play together or they won't. Caden green lined up against each other. Caden's here. So we'll just have to wait and see how it rolls out. I mean, it could even be a situation where they just want to see what it looks like with the product on the field, even though our boy Stoney has also said not too long ago in a um, in a uh, interview with uh, Chad Simmons is that you want to be developed, go to uh, Venables and Bates. They have a track record, so we'll, we'll we'll believe them in that capacity. All right, let's move out of the doom. And Seth, we totally know that you are venting. We are all about you. We, we understand it. We, we get it. Everybody's venting. Literally, my DMs have, have been full lately. Some of my mentions, same thing for all of them. It's been wild. So let's move into some exciting news, right? Let's move into the good stuff. Um, whoop, let's move that around. I did that wrong. It don't matter. But we've got this. Jay Nickens. Commitment, Millwood High School, 2025. Our guy, Emmett Jones, is cooking. Coop, tell me, how you feel about this commitment? I mean, big body guy. He, this, 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 this is, um, in this one, there wasn't much, uh, there's not much drama. Any uh, Emmett Jones recruiting, not much drama, right? This guy is lining it up. You know, it, we're going to be in the 25 class, uh, you know, watching Emmett, you know, kick back with a uh, with a with a, a adult beverage and just kicking it and relaxing. <laughs> right. He's focusing on the guys that we got in uh, the uh, in the fold already. But, uh, you know, I, I love him. Um, you know, he's got, you know, for his size, he's got some insane agility. And that just I mean, you, you look at the, you know, the film right here, even. You know, this guy, he can set you up. He's got twitch. He's got burst. Um, and again, you know, we've talked about this in the past, you know, with the guys in Oklahoma that we are holding here at the program, the, you know, <laughs> these guys, these kids are going to come in and work their backsides off to make sure that, you know, they are the next guy at wide receiver. They're the next guy at linebacker. They're the next guy on offensive lines. Like they, this is, this is great to see because, uh, you know, I think that we go after him pretty hardcore, um, you know, no matter which staff is here. But, uh, you know, if anybody's ever still unsure about Emmett Jones, um, you haven't been paying attention because this guy is uh, is, is just uh, answering the the line of people at his door. So I'm excited about Nickens. Uh, this is a guy that I wish that we could get him in here ASAP and start working. And so, uh, you know, Oklahoma's got some really good games that are going to be happening here this year. Trav, you dropped a post on him just really breaking breaking down how just great he is. Talk to the people. What, 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 how did you feel about Nickens? Yeah, out? I mean, I, I watched him play at Sooner 7 and Broken Arrow. He was a game changer in that. And, I mean, it's just – he just pops. Like, there's a lot of talent out there at, at those kind of regional events. And, I mean, he it was obvious who the best athlete was on the field. And this guy just started playing football. So, I mean – Again, he's got the size, you know, 6'3", 190 is kind of the most accurate that I've been able to gather across everything. 
Um, you know, it's, it's important also because you get guys locked down early. Like the timing of this is as important because Jaden wasn't going to be a guy that was going to commit early. Uh, you know, early on of the process, a lot of people said, you know, I think we get Mozi in the class, you get Eli, you get, you get, you get a lot of these kids. Obviously Grayson was in the class. Like you get a lot of these kids and then you start looking, okay, is it Andrew Marsh? You know, is it, you know, di different um, Quanell camp with them? Like mm -hmm. there, there were a lot of kids and it's like, all right, I don't know if Jaden Nickens is going to – I mean, obviously he's a take, but I don't know when he's going to commit. So we might be already at four guys or something like that. So then he moves – right up after the visit, moves it up. And it's like, I mean, these these kids – I mean, um, Kevin Sperry was at his announcement. Kevin Sperry has been working with guys. Kevin Sperry obviously is working very hard on flipping Nate Roberts. Like him moving – and going to these events, going to these camps, working out privately, like he understands his role. And this, I'm sorry, buzzword here. He understands his role just like Caleb Williams understood his role. Yeah. And Caleb did what he could to get everybody there with him. I mean, our leading receiver this year, most likely, is going to be a guy that got brought here by Caleb Williams. I mean, hmm. it's when you look at that, when you get a quarterback, a highly touted quarterback, that is willing to recruit like he recruits and even more so Sperry's family moved here so he could recruit here and move to a team that had a bunch of OU targets. Yep. I know that I, I personally know that Sperry was looking at other high schools and landed on Carl Albert. This wasn't just a, Oh, I'm going to move to Oklahoma and go to Carl Albert. I know that they were looking at other high schools yet. I don't think it's a coincidence that he picks the one that has like four or five other eventual sooner targets on it or current sooner targets on it. Like that's not a mistake. So with that, I think Jaden Nickens has an insane upside. I mean, that's a guy I think that could touch five-star status, especially after next year's camps and everything. I mean, he, like I said, he's a guy that's going to pop at seven on seven and at camps. Like physically he's so gifted that he's just going to be, he's going to get an uptick in the rankings simply because of that. So I mean, when you when you consider that, I mean, it's 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 massive, and it's flown mostly under the radar because everybody's bedwetting about Williams Winery. Um, like this, and and I feel bad for Jaden because he's not getting the attention that he should. I mean, we're talking about him right now, and the chat still can't stop talking about Williams Winery. Like, and that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that we're landing a consensus four star, you know, I think two, four, seven has him as the 88th overall player in the country. I think he said, I mean, yep. it's, it's, it should be about him, but again, we can't even, we can't even focus on him right now because like I said, the entire chat, all they want to talk about is Williams and He should have, he should have waited to announce. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I'm really shocked that even the Winery stuff is leaked, but yeah, Jay Nickens is, is a baller. JP, how you feel about Jaden? And then I'll, I'll close this out. Yeah, no, I mean, Jay Nickens is a beast. And like you guys just said, it it stinks that we're not able to talk about it and um, the light we should because of everything that's going on tomorrow. But, yeah, I mean, this is what Emma Jones does. He's been uh, on fire <laughs> the last couple of weeks, not only with 2024 guys, but especially with 2025 guys. And so it's exciting to see, you know, the, the receiver room in Oklahoma just continuing – to do what it does and what it always has does at Oklahoma, or excuse me, has done at Oklahoma. Um, everybody thought when Lincoln Riley left um, and took Dennis with him that, you know, we weren't going to be able to recruit anymore, but here we are. You know what I mean? So super excited for him. I agree. And I think the one thing that jumped out to me with this was twofold. One, the, his ability to block, like he likes to, he likes contact. Like when I, in just watching the film itself, he likes to hit people and actually open up holes for his teammates. And I'm just like, that's not, that doesn't feel very common at the wide receiver position. Most wide receivers are divas. And no, he likes to be physical with everything he does. And so I'm excited at the fact that we got a 6'3". And Trav, this is funny you said that. You're trying to figure out his height because ESPN has him listed like 6'5 on the basketball side. So I don't know how big the dude really is in real life. Well, but basketball, I'm <laughs> he dunks and everything like that. I mean, he, play, he plays bigger than 6'3". 
They're probably True. like, ain't no way he's 6'3". But also, I'm glad you brought up his blocking because kids like that, like, like when you drive a fast car, right, you tend to, like, other cars can go often as fast. I mean, we're all driving the speed limit and whatnot. But if you have the ability, you, like, show it off, right? You mm-hmm. tend to be a little bit heavier on that pedal, right? Like, Jaden Nickens is so physically gifted – he wants to use every opportunity possible to show his opponents how much more physically gifted he is. That's why you see him going up high for catches. That's why you see him trying to plant other dudes in the ground. That's why you see him on the basketball court going up for highlight reel dunks. When, when a guy is that special athletically, he wants to make sure everybody knows, most importantly his opponents, that they don't have the physical gifts that he does, and he's going to remind you of it consistently and that's why i think he's such a willing blocker is because he want he wants to show you that yeah i'm tall and i'm fast but i am strong too and you're gonna feel me out here today yeah th- th- and i'm saying that's what shocked the heck out of me i'm watching him just on these videos like literally grab dudes and just throw them to the ground he's running through the people in the secondary i've seen him crack back on some linebackers i'm like oh you like to be physical i'm t- we need players like that. I mean, think about the holes he's going to be able to open up because I'm going to be honest, when I start looking at everything, even from last season and the, the, the run game, run plays that we had that we weren't as successful, it's kind of because of the blocking at the wide receiver position. I mean, it's no shade to them. They're probably legs were gone, but that's what you started to notice. If you look upfield, you're like, oh, they were able to get back there because the person that's supposed to block them missed. <laughs> and it's something that's new. We're all they're all they were all learning, which I'm glad that we're now learning about that and we're getting better at it. So that leads me right into Emmett Jones itself. Guys, can we just give this man his flowers? Can we just applaud him real quick? Can we say, my man, look at this. Six commits yes. on the four star status, two commits on the three star status. And don't forget about the transfers he's helped bring in. Brendan Thompson, uh from Brendan Thompson from uh Texas. Got him to come across the Red River. Andrew Anthony, I heard he was a part of that because he came on the exact same day that he committed. It, was this the best hire out of nowhere? Because I know that we was talking about samples as well as Malcolm Kelly. And then we end up with Emmett Jones, and now he's got roughly 10 commits. JP, I'm throwing it at you, man. What, how are you feeling about Emmett Jones and what he's doing today? Yeah, man. I mean, I remember, you know, when we were looking for a wide receiver coach, like you said, samples and Kelly thrown out there. and. You know, a lot of OU fans, just as OU fans do, freaking out when figured out Samples was going to make his way to Arizona State. And uh, when we found out Kelly was maybe going to stay at TCU. But, you know, the more that I got to learn about Emmett Jones and, you know, study what he did at Kansas as well as Texas Tech and just his um, prowess in the Dallas area um, as well, I was kind of excited about him. I was like, okay, you know, I, I hadn't really done much research on him before he was in the process. And then when I started to hear – uh, from people and even, even from Trav, like, hey, though, know, this guy is, is legit. And he's proven himself. <laughs> I mean, clearly, <laughs> he's, proven, he's proven himself. You know, you guys aren't just jumping on the bench. And, and let's not forget the, the policy is not just for defensive players. It's for, it's for everybody. So, I mean, this guy's got eight commits <laughs> that he's got to say, we're not taking no visits. Like, that, yeah. that to me is crazy. That's crazy to me. So. Who does that? Like, and and I get it. I get it. We've talked about that as nauseum here. That a lot of these kids are looking at the fact that the twenty twenty five cycle is going to be different than twenty three and twenty four. You're not going to have unlimited kids to recruit. You're going to have unlimited kids that you can bring um, in. So because of that, some of them are looking like I want my spot, and I don't want nobody to take it. And yeah, we're we're lucking out and getting some really good ones. Uh oh, had a little more sound than I wanted. Trav, Emmett, what you think? This is and this is Nickens on the court, just so y'all can see how much he likes to body people. <laughs> yeah, I mean specifically on Emmett, it's. I mean, I've said it before. It's like when Thanos got the Infinity Stones. I mean, he was already a Titan, already the Mad Titan. Um, but mm-hmm. I mean, with him behind an OU logo, and 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 honestly, I'm, I I got to get something off my chest. Go ahead. Specifically about the Emmett Jones thing. Do not use Emmett Jones's success to discredit what Cale Gundy did for this university. Agreed. Because I've seen a lot of that out there. Cale Gundy, who? The, no, no. Cale Gundy recruited some of the best players that have ever played at the University of Oklahoma. 
So wanted to get that out there. I've you can give Emmett his roses without stomping out the garden of Kale Gundy. Yeah, he did. He did nothing but give everything to the university. You know, recruited at a high level. You know, was was, was committed to us. Everything like that. Like it, it's unfortunate the way it ended, but you don't have to. You don't have to extinguish Kale's light in order to put the shine on Emmett Jones. So, um, that being said, Emmett cooking. Emmett's cooking. <laughs> I mean, it's he, he's on one. And I'm excited because – I'm excited because, you know, somebody on the radio on the text line the other day was like, man, you guys are giving Emmett too much love. He hasn't even landed a five-star. It's like, I mean, I okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. But, I mean – would you want to tell Emmett, hey, no, don't take a Jaden Nickens, don't take a Grayson Harris, don't take – I mean, don't take these kids and wait for DeCorian Moore? Like, does that make – like, does that make sense to you? No, it, it doesn't make sense. So, um, I do – I've got to teach somebody how to read real quick. Hold on. So, this big shot Milch, it looks like, he is quoting Parker Thune when he said the momentum that – Missouri had was dead in the water, but big shot can't read. Um, and thought he said, Missouri is dead in the water. It's two different things. Big shot. So, yeah. Um, if you're going to take shots at somebody, just try and be more accurate. But, um, yeah, Emma Jones, straight cooking. Um, like I said, about to take Isaiah Mosey as well. So that would put the count at, Four to two, um, if we're still keeping track with uh, Kamori Moore. So, um, and that would be out of Missouri's offers to wide receivers in the 2025 class. OU will have two out of their top three committed, and Alabama's got the other one committed. So, just as long as we keep in score, I'm keeping it on receivers though. I keep in score. Coop, you feeling on um, on um, on Emmett Jones and his performance so far? Well, you hear like, uh, you know, you hear all the time about what Joey McGuire does and how he is just he runs he runs Texas, you know, not too far right behind him is Emma Jones. Uh, the respect that he gets in, you know, the DFW area uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Millwood hasn't always been a, a, a sooner friendly area, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. So that's that's another that's another, uh, you know, he's coming into these programs, which we have not spent a lot of attention in. And, you know, you've, you've heard it ad nauseum about, uh, you know, just the, the, the head coaches around uh, Oklahoma who, um, you know, were, were not getting the love from, from the Sooners. And so, um, you know, we're now getting that. And, uh, and, and I'm going to bring up two names. Uh, how many Sooner fans would have loved to have Justin Blackman? Um on our, on our roster, oh how many gosh. people would, would love bring to up have Rashawn? Name. Yeah, Rashawn Woods. Um, you know, Justin Broyles was committed to uh, not Justin Broyles. Uh, Ryan Broyles was committed to Oklahoma State, and we flew we flipped him. So again, I don't. You know, I can bring up three names from the previous three five stars. Uh, one of them is playing in nowhere state now. And I, and I wish the, 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 the best for Trajan bridges, uh, Hazelwood, you know, we saw what he did, um, between here and Arkansas and now Theo Weiss, you know, he leaves off to, to Missouri, but none of those guys ever turned into anything. So you catch a homegrown guy, three or four star, bring them in here and let Emmett Jones, who ha still yet has not coached a game, uh, but you're going to see some of these five stars start looking over and they're going to hear about that reputation that Emma Jones has. And, you know, he's going to say, listen, we, we, you know, I was, I was in the DMS. I was calling you, I was texting you and yep. you weren't. And what, what did Geno Smith say that y'all wrote me off and, you know, I didn't write back. And so uh, that's, that's, that's what uh, Emmett's doing. And you're seeing, um, you know, you, again, you, you see, uh, Jaquez Petaway, he's come in and there's, I mean, the, he is apparently tearing it up. Uh, you saw some of the, in the hype video, um, you saw guys catching touchdowns. Like we're going to see something great. And again, I, Trev, I, I, I am 100% going to applaud you for what you just said about Kale Gundy. 
Um, you know, I don't know if there was any other way that Kale Gundy ever left Oklahoma outside of what happened. Um, but that man put work in. Uh, he was in on AD. He was in on DeMarco. He was in on so many great names that we've had. Uh, he, he, if they asked him to take over special teams, that dude was going to be in the film room learning how to coach special teams, wide receivers, running backs, back and forth. So uh, now we've got some amazing opportunity right here with Emma Jones, and you're going to start seeing some stuff. Like, so watch, watch. If, if these guys start balling out, these receivers start balling out for us, and you're going to see, you know, some some more love from some of the higher ranked people. But again, uh, I saw somebody in the chat said, you know, if uh, Jaden Nickens, it, well, you know, was in Texas, he might be a five star. Sure, why the hell yep. not? But I'd rather him be where he's at, be on committed here, recruiting with Kevin Sperry. Uh, Kevin Sperry is taking that Caleb Williams thing during COVID year and just absolutely uh, taking it to the next level taking it it's hank of course it's hank hank's always got those good takes but <laughs> he, he's taking it to the next level and uh you're gonna see uh more and more people who are starting to get the uh um starting to get a lot of attention um around oklahoma because they're gonna see uh you know that elijah thomas he is going he is going to be a stud also and i think that mcquistian actually said that jay nickens is a guy who's still filling out his body as you know six three plus 180 ish that's a dude that could come in here and play around 200, 210. Now think of another wide receiver duo that was under Levy, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, between AJ Brown and DJ Metcalf. Like those DK were big Metcalf. Bar- yeah, yeah. Those guys, those guys were were big body dudes. Now, I mean, I, hopefully, you know hopefully Nickens gets there, but he's going to, he's going to ball out. So again, Emmett's going to be able to sit back, relax, uh, you know, pop a beverage, help out around wherever he, he can help out. And when he starts getting some of these five star calls, you know, again, maybe that's the deal to where we look down the line and say, all right, well, maybe somebody else needs to, to, to move on out. So uh, I agree less Sperry Sperry's working himself up. He is going to be, uh, he's going to be getting a lot of Baker comps before too long, and you're already starting to see it. Yeah, you're starting to hear a lot about that now. And and Nickens playing basketball, I don't know. I don't see that happening, but I'll give you all a comp on him size-wise. I knew they were about, he was about his size, and as physical as he plays, I mean, I hate to say him, but – he started his college career in North Carolina and then went to Oklahoma State, a.k.a. Oakey Light. But Darius Bowman, Darius yeah. Bowman, 6'3", 215. He was a monster in college, like monster. Everybody remembers him in college. Everybody was like, oh, wow, huge. Nickens can be that. Nickens is still filling out, as mentioned. He can be that size. And if he ends up that's oh, Jesus, I, I don't even want to – Wow, Whew. yeah, that, that's a spe- yeah. special talent. And then you want to try to body up that guy too, jump balls, all of that. Yeah, and I do think that I think Nickens and Harris uh, and Grayson Harris have a chance at being five stars before the cycle actually really starts for twenty five. Right. I think by the time we get to the beginning, at once twenty four is signed, I think both of them will be five star uh, prospects. They're already top one hundred, you know, top one fifty. I mean, you're in the top one fifty. Obviously, you're really good, especially if you're a year ahead because people are still trying to evaluate you. The evaluation period is about to happen this coming season. Um, and once that period hits from August to November, I promise you some of them got, cats are going to jump, especially and uh, join uh, Kevin Sperry in that. All right, we're going to get off this. I know everybody in here is still on the, talking on, with Neri. On the Kevin Sperry thing real quick. Go ahead. I know uh, yeah. somebody said that uh, his height will keep him from being a five-star. He is what? quite literally the exact same height as Jackson Arnold. So – I wouldn't say yeah. that he can't be a five star quite yet. So, I mean, Jackson was a five star plus. So, obviously, um, that'd possible. be a little tough. <laughs> we, uh, we, can't, the same height. Uh, we can't, uh, you know, knock our short kings around here, especially given our our quarterback history. So, you know, touche. That is a very fair point. We're not infamous for having six four quarterbacks uh, with the, with the, a certain famous last name. We're infamous for having guys that go out there and win Heisman trophies. So, let's move on. And so the topic that I actually cared the most about, I want to talk about fall camp. Everything's been coming down the line. You've been hearing a lot of good on both sides of the ball. We've had former players that have gone to uh, the practices and made mention that this team looks different. 
physically they look like a different team than last year. The drills look different. Their movement looks, everything looks different. And I want to preface this first before we jump into it. And we talked about this ad nauseum. And I'm going to get from you all your top three players on both sides of the ball that you think are really going to be super impactful at the end of your feelings on fall camp. So remember, talk about what you think, so your things on fall camp, and then give me three guys that you feel like on both sides of the ball are really going to jump out. So if that helps you put everything together, you can use it. But I want to open up with this. Remember, this team here, and this is, and I'm gonna post this on Twitter. I'm gonna post a video on YouTube soon. I want everybody in this chat, all 238 people that are watching this. Um, we only got 63 likes, so you need to hit them like button too. But I want y'all to hear me when I say this: Do not post anywhere on social media when you see this team perform this year and ask why last year's team didn't do this. Do not do that to yourself. <laughs> That's the most asinine thing you could possibly say, mainly because. This year, we've only got 50 people trying to figure out this offense and defense, where last year we had over 100. Keep that in mind before you say anything. So let's pass this around. Trav, we're going to go right back to you. Fall camp, what you hearing, what you like, who's jumped out to you in regards to that? Because scrimmage went down yesterday, and a lot of stuff is coming down the line. Yeah, uh, I want to essentially – you know, quote, Miguel Chavis, when they asked, you know, why is this year going to be different? He said, Jerry Schmidt. So it's year two in the strength and conditioning. You saw jumps in physicality, um, even in year two, guys. Like, everybody, we all got worked up. It's always roster day. Everybody gets excited, right? Like, ooh, who gained weight? Who lost weight? What's going on? Well, you saw seemingly, like, bigger jumps this year with year two than you did in year one, which – will confuse a lot of people, right? Because they're like, man, Jerry Schmidt was here last year. How come we got pushed around? It's like, guys, y'all work out? Like, come on. Like, do you even lift, bro? Like, you've got to, like, understand it takes a little bit longer, especially these massive changes, right? So, you know, you've got to allow these people to get bigger. I mean, now we've got – if Kelvin Gilliam eats a 17-ounce steak, it would put him over the 300 mark. So that would be our seventh, I believe, 300 plus. We only had one on the roster last year, Isaiah Coe. So like just looking at the just beef, no pun intended, I suppose, with that, but the beef that we've got on the defensive line now, we're really, um, you know, I know know you're saying if we're doing three three people on each side of the ball, I am going to stick with the beef. I will say – Jordan Kelly, Dejon Terry, and Isaiah Coe. I'll say those three. I know, you know, Jonah Lalu, I would have I would have included you if you let me say four, but those three, because <laughs> I think the interior defensive line is bigger, they're stronger, they're more physical. And and that's the thing. Like we can all sit here and say, like, oh, they're just gonna be they're gonna be better because second year in the system, which is one hundred percent true, right? But that's not measurable. I mean, it's measurable because they're in second year, but it's not like you can't get on a scale and be like, hey, is this guy in year two or year five? Like Dylan Gabriel can't get on a scale next to Jackson Arnold and it tells you how much experience they have. You can get on a scale and say, nah, this guy's 320 pounds now. Like, no, nah, this guy's 310 pounds now. Like you can legitimately measure that and measure the difference. So I think that's really why, why I think that. And then on the other side of the ball, I'm going to stick with the beef. So I'm going to say Tyler Guyton, who's going to be – him and Kelvin Banks are going to battle it out to be the top rank or top regarded offensive lineman. Um, and then I will say – and it, this is going to be weird. I will say two guys that are going to be in the same position on the 2D. I'll say Jacob Sexton and Walter Rouse. And the reason I'm saying both those guys is because Walter Rouse, big as a house, he looks good. He looks healthy. Like – He's going to start at that left tackle spot, and he's got tons of experience. And now you've got Jacob Sexton, who's just a pup, who I think is actually going to take over the position at some point, take over that left tackle position. So I bring that up, the experience and the savvy of and the intelligence of a guy that came over from Stanford, you know, in Walter Rouse, being passed up even by a guy like Jake Sexton. So those three on each side, I went beefy for everybody. And uh, maybe it's because I'm hungry, um, but 
Um, that's what that's what we're going with, and that's what I'm saying uh, is the reason why we're so improved is because of the trenches. I love that you pointed out the beef that we have on this team. And TJ, yes, I did say this um, as a kinesiology health studies major at UCO back in my former life of college. It takes your body about a year to really adjust size wise when you're in certain regimens. That's why when you work out and you look and a year later you see a big result, that's a sustainable one. It takes time. It takes time for your body to adjust to, especially as strenuous as Schmitty's workout plans are. That, that It's infamous. I mean, there's stories. Just go search Schmitty and players for OU, and they all got some funny stories about what it's like. I mean, heck, the new ones were talking about how they were like, oh, it's not going to be too bad. And then, you know, they go in and like, wait, wait, this was the warm-up? Oh, God. All right. Let's keep going. And so, yeah, it's a monster. Coop, talk to me. Fall camp stuff's coming out. What you think? Um, I'll start on the offense side, and uh, I've got Nick Anderson. Uh, it's all about health for him. Like when you want an NFL body receiver, uh, Nick Anderson fits every single every single piece. Um, he's starting to really, uh, you know, starting to really really put some things together. And so, I mean that that's uh, and it, it's you're going to have. Drake is going to live in those in those tough catches. Um, we talked about it in the past. You know, he was working out with uh, all those slot receivers. You know, with uh, like Danny Amendola from the New England days, and um, so he's going to be working that. You're going to have Stogner doing something over the middle. There was a play in the scrimmage where Stogner caught a pass over the middle. So we do have that in the playbook, and so that is <laughs> that is an option. Um, but when you've got guys like Andrew Anthony. Uh, Brandon Thompson, potentially uh, Jaquez Petaway and Nick Anderson going deep. I, you can't cover everything. Right. And so that leads me to the second guy. Um, I'm calling for DG. Um, I, I, Dylan, he doesn't have to play with a fear that if he goes down, it's little sisters of the poor coming in behind him. You know, no <laughs> offense to Davis Bevel, his games. I mean, you saw who he's dating or hanging out with. So, uh, you know, he, he's he, he's he's good at some other things, but um, he's got himself. Um, <laughs> a, a man full swinging bill. up. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, hey, hey, the Davis Bevel thing, I just got to touch on because I don't think his name's going to come up the rest of this pod. Um, <laughs> we start, we're, we're we're shooting long form interviews through um, uh, audience rent with a few people, Lauren Chamberlain and Alex Straco. We've got a 30 minute interview with Davis Bevel and we dive into his mentality after the Texas game, how that all went down. It was wild. But yeah, he, he he's very aware of his uh, of his performances that day. All right. Yeah. I, I, I'll be tuning into that. So make sure. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll have that spread all over social media. So y'all can check it out. But Coop, go ahead and finish up. Yeah. So um, but again, uh, you know, we talked about the I think it was JP maybe uh, was talking about the you know, the blocking. Um, and that that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why uh, between health and blocking, that's why you didn't see much out of Jaden or Nick Anderson last year. Um, you know, those guys need to understand that that is a part of the game that they have to, they have to knock out. That's why you had a lot of guys out there instead of them, uh, because you got to do the blocking. Um, it, it's the difference between, you know, gray going for a 75 yard touchdown versus a 25 yard scamper. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but you know, Nick got caught a caught a touchdown the other day. Um, he he he's ready. It's just going to be health, and it's going to be mentality. And yeah, you got to catch the damn ball when it goes to you. But DG, uh, you know, he is going to have a, a free path uh, to do everything that he needs to do, and it's going to be right in front of him. He knows what's going to happen if he starts, you know, with the same stuff that he was dealing with last year with the overthrows and holding on the ball too long. Um, you know, so I, I got to think that the coach staff is going to uh, allow him to kind of become unleashed. Um, he's going to be able to run and um, you're going to see Jackson Arnold in some packages and you're going to see him in games early when it's not completely out of the realm of possibility that, uh, you know, it, that it's still somewhat competitive. Um, so I expect a lot out of DG. Now, I'm not saying he's going to throw for 5000 yards. That's not what we that's not what we are going to see out of OU this year because it is. <laughs> you are, you are. So I think that he is, you know, with, with missing a game and a half and the struggles that he had last year, um, you know, what was around, you know, 3,500 um, yards, you know, you're going to see him right around that 4,000 mark, but this team is going to be more efficient. 
Um, and then Walter Rouse, uh, you know, from when, when you listen to uh, guys who've been around uh, right now, he, and again, I, I don't think Trav was saying that like Walter Rouse is just a guy and he's not going to be, that's just, Jacob Sexton is a freaking dude. And he is going to be a, another, you know, first, second round draft pick a, at some point down the line. And so, but Walter Rouse comes in with that football intelligence. He is a big dude. He is a very big dude. And um, he is, you know, hanging out with potentially the best offensive line coach he's ever been around. Uh, mm -hmm. Going to the de defensive side, um, buy your stock on Gentry. Um, that guy is bigger. He is, he has been putting his nose in and making the tackles and getting in there. So you're going to see Gentry Williams. Gentry Williams is going to um, probably take that spot. And that's another deal. Competitive depth. Everybody take a drink, right? Um, but, you know, you've got Josiah Makari. Uh, those guys are breathing down his throat. Uh, you know, Kendall Dolby, those guys are going to be right there behind him. And just like uh, the first topic of the day, um, you know, just don't expect that there's not rotation happening quite a bit out there. And it doesn't mean that Gentry's bad or Woody's bad. It means that there's a bunch of freaking ballers behind him. Um, mm -hmm. Dejon Terry. Um, that's different. You know, now, yes, we have, we're going to have, you know, we're a stake away from seven guys over 300. Uh, but Dejon Terry is, uh, you know, I don't care what he did at Tennessee or didn't do. He is a body and he is out there and he brings a mentality. And if he comes over here, he is going to be more productive just because he's playing the big 12. And so we're going to see that. Um, and then I, I'm going to go, I'm going to buy the hype, buy the hype. I'm going to say that Justin Harrington actually looks what, like what we are hearing. I'm, I'm going to say it. There, there's a lot of rotation and there's a lot of capabilities because don't be surprised if you see Desan McCullough and Justin Harrington on the field at the same time. You get you get somebody like that, and both of those guys are interchangeable. Both those guys can cover, and both of those guys can come in and put their put their body on the line. A third and three. How would you like to be that offensive coordinator? Wondering is Harrington backing? Is Harrington coming? Is Desan coming? What's going on? Who's sliding down? Then you also throw out a Trace Ford or a PJ or you know R. Mason Thomas. Uh, you know, you, you've got so many. So, yeah, if we could say seven, I, you know, there's a there's a lot of hype around a lot of the guys. <laughs> but it, it, just in general, it is going to be a lot of competitive depth on on, on this team. And a lot of guys are going to be vying for playing time and they're not going to sit back, relax and say, you know what? I didn't make the start. So let's go hit the transit, uh, the, the, the transfer portal. These guys are going to come in and they're going to play because they know what's they know what this year could potentially be. And, you know, Brent is talking nonstop about just the, the inches that we missed last year. We are we are a few plays, a few inches away from a, a different, a completely different. Please game. don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Please don't say those words nope. that we heard no, all gonna... the last five years. We were this close. I don't want to hear that. That's the one. That's, that's the phrase. that has <laughs> got to come from everybody's brain going forward because that's what we've dealt with from the old regime. But. And a lot of the questions in here, real quick, Corey, you do not want Schmitty's offseason workout program. You do not want to do that to yourself. Um, but I bet you we can go find outside. It. Just go outside <laughs> and start running until season starts. And there you go. Uh, JP, we're going to pass that on to you. Talk to me. Um, give me how you feeling about fall camp. Give me your, your threes on both sides of the ball. And, and, and Trav, before you go, JP, Trav. Hey man, I love the beef. I'm just gonna keep saying it. I, I love the choice of the beef because you you you've got my brain going. JP, what you thinking? Oh, I think you're on mute, my boy. Uh, you are on mute. I am on mute. I apologize. There we go. My daughter finally stopped crying. So yeah. hey, congratulations. Here we are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, man. I mean, fall camp wise, you know, again hearing good things about the defense, and just like you said earlier, the fact that. You have so many more players that are able to teach now um, instead of it just being the coaches. And even some of the coaches were learning uh, pieces of the scheme last year right. in different position groups. So um, definitely see the defense doing a lot better things. Um, and then offensively, you know, I've heard it's it's about the same level as last year, if not a little better, um, which, you know, last year is a top 15 offense. And so, you know, when you, when you lose two tackles uh, in the top three rounds and then you lose – you know, running back that got drafted, um, I mean, and a receiver in the second round, like saying that you're going to be the same, not a little bit better on offense is, is saying a little bit of something too. Um, so I would say I'll start on the defensive side of the ball. 
And we're just, are we are we talking? Remind me, are we talking like uh, people yeah, that just, we? Who do you think will be impactful? Who do you think is going to pop yeah. this year? Just give me yeah. your top threes on both sides. Just yeah. you know, because we can go all day, and yeah, I just yeah, you know, yeah. in in, a, in the service of time, I figured yeah. that y'all three would be, would start us off well, and then we can just expand from there. I'll uh, I'll, I'll do one on each level of the defense. So for for huh? the backfield, I'll say uh, Billy Bowman. You know, in his in his third year, you know, really really looking good, obviously physically. But looking for him to, you know, be the leader, and it sounds like he has been the alpha in that in that safety room. Um, really taking the charge and solidifying his spot, and you know, maybe we're talking about him as not only, you know, first team All Big Twelve, hopefully, but maybe maybe honorable mention All American, maybe more than that. I don't know. You know, I I think he's he's shown uh, what he can do. I remember I, I was at the Oklahoma State game, um, you know, in Norman, and I remember uh, when he picked off Spencer Sanders, literally coming from. Mm-hmm. Uh, about you know the middle of the field all the way to the to the sideline like it was crazy the range he had it was like man that that shows you why he's a five star right there and so for him to just continue to grow that way um, yeah I think that's gonna be good um, for the linebackers man I, I've I've heard good things about Jaron Canick man I have um, you know I, I've heard that he's obviously we know the physical traits that he has but I heard that he's just been a dog like getting it. Um, in terms of his IQ and, and, you know, actually trying to understand the defense and understanding where he needs to be positioning, et cetera. Um, and I, I've heard that that's starting to come along. And so if that starts to come along, I mean, I, I just, you just remember when he came in Nebraska and just like shot out of a cannon, right? Like he had, he, you had, you know, Trav and I were talking about, I feel like for the next three weeks, everybody was like, put him in right now. Put him in right now. We're like, he still don't know how to really play the position because he didn't play it in high school. But like, you know, he's still learning. But it just he has that type of raw talent that makes you go, oh my gosh, that kid needs to be in the game a lot um, of the time. So yeah, looking forward for him. Um, and then defensive line. Um, man. I'm gonna. Go. I know it's tough. There's I'm so many. Rondell Bothroyd, and that might be low hanging fruit, but you know, Rondell Bothroyd is, is somebody that you know he may not, as Gabe and Teddy have said, he may not like look um, as aesthetically pleasing as like a PG Ottawa or even a Trace Ford per se, but man, that man produces, um, and that's what I've heard at a, at a fall camp as well is that he's just been consistent um, and consistently potentially one of the best outside defensive linemen or edge, if that's what you want to call him. Um, that they ha- that we have, and so looking forward to seeing what he can do. Um, and you know, we're going to need that consistency from that position group, which you know, the defensive line as a whole uh, has allegedly taken a huge step up from you know what we saw last year. And we need that uh, for this scheme to be as good as it was. And for you know, to say we took a huge step up and we what we lead, did we lead the nation in tackles for loss last year? Yeah. We were top five, I think, or top ten. I know we led the conference. Yeah. yeah, we led the Big 12, but not the nation. No, okay. But, yeah, I mean, even still, right, being that top in top Big 12, like, with a defensive line that's not even scratching the surface of their potential is crazy. Um, and then offensively, I'm going to go Gavin Sawchuk um, as my, my first guy. Man, Trav and I were talking about him on a show a couple weeks ago. And Tra- Trav, who do, who do we say he reminds us of? Do you remember the way he runs? Wait, who? Gavin Sawchuk. Oh, Rodney Anderson. Rodney Anderson. <laughs> yeah, I heard that before. Rodney Anderson. I remember I, I was watching him Florida against Florida State, and I was like, "Hold up, was that was that Rodney?" Like some of the cuts he was making, um, and the way and he so climbs up past the line yeah. of scrimmage into the second level, it's it's a it's it's like watching a quarterback step up with the blockers kind of folding behind him. He's just got that speed where it it looks exactly like Rodney. And the hair helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's but, hair. you know, and he and he's, he's a – man, he, he flies, you know, potentially one of the fastest players on the team as well. Um, so, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Because we – I mean, I don't, I don't know the last time we really had – in the last few years that we had a running back that we felt like had home run speed. You know what I mean? Like Eric Gray didn't necessarily have it. Kennedy – Kennedy sometimes did, sometimes didn't. It was hit or miss, it felt like. Um, and, you know, I, I won't take too much – too much time again, but we were talking about this on the on the show on Wednesday. I asked a question, you know, if we had to get one yard, would you rather have Samaj P. Ryan or Adrian Peterson? 
And um, I will say, I think one of the most underrated parts of Samaj's game is that that man had so many long runs for touchdowns, like at his size, which is crazy. So, like, just thinking about the speed that Samaj somehow had, even at how big he was to to finish, but it just got me thinking about you know the last time we had somebody that could that could finish runs like that. And as you said, blocking is a big part of that. Uh, I'm gonna also go with Coop or DG. Um, I'm looking for him to have an even better year. And I know a lot of people want to say he had the worst year ever, you know, for our soonest quarterback last year, which is, you know, ridiculous. Obviously, that's not factual at all. But, you know, people people will say what they want to say and they don't like DG and this and that. Uh, but I, I think you're going to see a renewed focus from him this year where he's been doing good. He's been He's been throwing balls in the middle of the field for, you know, those of you who think he can't do that. Um, you know, that that's what I've heard. And so – I'm looking forward to it, man. I think I think he's uh, ready to go. And Coop, as you said, I mean, you know, if he messes around at all, he's got he's got the the man number ten nipping at his heels. So, um, you know, he's he, he's got to step up, and I think he will in a big way. And then, um, I'm gonna go. I was gonna go with offensive line, but you know, I'll leave the beef to Trav. I'll uh, <laughs> that man, that man, you know, cook steaks. He used to cook steaks for a living, so cook steaks pretty well. Um, yeah. Wide receivers wise, I'm going to go Jaden Gibson. I'm going to go Jaden Gibson. Um, you know, mm. I've heard that he's been doing better in camp. I'm not saying that he's, you know, been an all star, but I, I think that man has such a high ceiling uh, that, you know, if he if he gets even a little bit of consistency and can get on the field, you know, it'll, it'll do a lot of good things for our offense. Um, you know, he could, he could, you, you jump balls. I mean, you, you talk about his speed as well. Uh, we just need him to catch the ball. But I think that he's been uh, more consistent as that, as far as I've heard in camp. Um, I was going to go Gavin Freeman, but that's pretty. It's pretty, pretty, pretty low hanging fruit. I mean, very low hanging mm-hmm. fruit because we all we all know. I mean, the head ball coach has talked about him. So yep. yeah, that, that's a uh, that's what I'd say. That's what I go with for my three on each side. Love it. Love it. And you pick y'all all pick some great players. I'm gonna throw in some additionals in there. TJ asked this great question here about Jaden Gibson. And based upon all the write-ups I saw, especially I saw one from a Sooner Scoops from Eddie. And he said that Jaden's out there. Um, he, he's, he's catching passes and cooking people like the six, five is starting to work. The, the four, 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 five speed is starting to show. He looks like what we've been dreaming him to be him and Nick Anderson. And so if you got bookends at six foot five and six foot four with those two guys over the next couple of years for Jackson Arnold, brace yourself, folks. We're going to have a great time on that one. Uh, Teddy did mention that uh, the secondary was installing a new system. Actually, I think they actually dropped a pod earlier today. I haven't got a chance to listen to it, but I know on Wednesday there were concerns around the secondary, but they pointed out that immediately that, oh, they changed some things up because we don't, we, we, we're not too deep. Seth, we're four deep. And yeah. our, when uh, Robert Spears Jennings get back from the shoulder situation and Jaden Rose fully healthy around safety and corners, a lot of the players we have, even down to Macari Vickers, they can play both. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Kendall Dolby, um, Reggie Pearson mentioned that on the show that when he was on here, he said he just needed to get him out of his own head. And it sounds like he's hitting folks and getting to that point where he's playing better. Coop, you're right. Buy as much Gentry Williams stock as you possibly can get your hands on. He's probably going to be the one starting on the opposite side of Woody. Now, do I think he – I don't – I'll say this. I don't think you should take what our depth chart looks like, games one, two, through three, lightly. Don't take that as literal as the gospel because I think in between those three games, you will we will determine and know who's going to actually start going into game four. So – Jay, is that Keep, is that because the competitive depth? Jesus Christ! <laughs> There's so much competitive depth. So yes, that is the reason why we have we're we're probably deep three deep at just about every position right now, which is something we wouldn't have even thought before. We wouldn't have fathomed that. It's more so the coaching staff and based on all the write ups, the coaching staff looks at this and says. I can trust you guys. I can trust the third guy behind you now. I feel more comfortable with you playing, even as the freshmen are coming in, because this freshman class we had, yeah, it was pretty, pretty legit. Um, ten wins or bust, you are 100% correct. It is ten wins or bust. This, this, we, we have no excuse. Makari Vickers has definitely put out some stuff on camp. Um, 
I think I'm gonna put personally. I think they they have to find a way to try to redshirt him, but I think that that's the hard part is that he's almost forcing people saying him and Peyton Bowen are ones as well as Josiah Wagner are forcing the hand of the team to play them. It's a, you need to find a way to get me on the field. Stop playing. Don't, there's no games to play. Find a way to get me on the field. And it's kind of making people a little bit stressful on that one. And Coop, you point this out beautifully. Uh, Lewis Carter is the missile. And that's literally all that Teddy and Gabe were talking about with him is like that dude can hit. And so I'm going to give you all my 3D my top three on both sides of the ball. Uh, we'll start with the secondary. I'm going to say Reggie Pearson. I think that he's going to be the uh, quarterback in the secondary position. I think he's going to be the one to help lead uh, everybody, even Billy Bowman. I think he's going to really help him and let Billy kind of be a little bit more free. Or um, as they were talking about with the Cheetah Rose, they've been put, putting um, putting uh, Peyton Bowen as well as Pearson at Cheetah. So, because we're going to be seeing so many different formations over the first three games, that's when y'all need to pay the most attention to what everybody's doing. Don't worry about the scoreboard. We're probably going to blow out all three of them, knock on wood, uh, barring injury. But I expect us to do a lot of different things to figure things out, see what what flows best with everybody, who's going to read the right calls, but expect to see some uh, Reggie Pearson at the safety spot. But he is the one that you need to buy a lot of stock on. Um, if you want to go corner, Gentry Williams. Linebacker? I'm with you, JP, on Kanik. Um, he's running really fast, but to the right spots now. No longer the wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is he is getting there with excitement, and he's actually hitting people instead of missing his assignment. And that just comes from being a freshman, playing linebacker at for the first time really in his career. Yeah. He, he's going to step up. Yeah. And Stutzman moving to uh, Mike, if I'm correct, there's a chance that he's going to be the quarterback at the linebacker spot. So, you know what, I'm going to move it to Stutzman. Keep an eye on him. He'll lead the linebackers. I think he's going to really stand out this year. And you got young players behind him. We're so deep there. Goodness gracious. Defensive line, though, Dejon Terry. I think he's going to be the one that anchors that defensive line. I believe PJ is going to end up playing more as a freshman than they're going to probably want to, but he's one of those players where keep me off the field. We I double dog dare you, but I think Dejan Terry coming from Tennessee is going to be the force. I think he ends up with double digit sacks. Uh, I don't think he just eats uh, blockers. I think he actually runs through them and makes stuff happen, especially these first three games. Keep your eyes out for that. Offense line wise. I'm with Trav. I'm big on Tyler Guyton. I've been big on him since he transferred here from TCU. When I saw big man make the catch for the touchdown and I saw his ability to move, I was like, oh, beating both sees something out of this. He sees a raw talent that he can make work. And I was like, yeah, he's going to be raw. We got to figure it out. Then he did what he did to Jared Verse in the bowl game. Yeah, that's first round pick, baby. Argue with your mama. Just go watch the film of him fighting with Jared Verse. And he was tossing around. Even Jared Verse gave him some props. Keep that in mind. And versus the top 10 draft pick in the NFL draft, and he passed on it this year. Florida State did something illegal to get him to come back. I don't know what it is. But he did something. So I'm just going to go put an investigation in on myself. Um, keep your eyes out at the wide receiver spot, Gavin Freeman. Uh, the way that BV, Schmitty, all of them have been praising him because of his natural strength and then his ability to just play. He's a gamer. So... Drake, be careful. I don't want Gavin to take your spot, but I think Gavin's going to be a force. I mean, his first touch in college football was a touchdown, guys. That tells you something, right? Um, and then lastly, DG, I wanted to throw spew, spew off a few stats and then we can keep go back around table on this one. Y'all remember, uh, Dylan Gabriel was the number two yards quarterback in the Big 12 last season, right behind Max Duggan by about 500 yards. He mm-hmm. averaged over 264 yards passing, which was number two in the Big 12. Weird, I know, the Big 12 usually has a lot more passers. And outside of Quinn Ewers, who only played 10 games, Dylan had the least amount of interceptions for someone that played 10 games at six. Three of those came against Baylor off two tip passes that, you know, on two of those. So as much as we want to knock them, I'll say this. In practice, this is one thing that was pointed out by Teddy and him. It was pointed out by some others in writing. He's throwing the ball across the middle a lot. And I think it's because he's got people he can trust. I'm just being honest. When you got guys you can trust and you feel really confident with your receivers, especially now that they've been a year in this actual offense, he's going to do everything y'all been begging for. Why is he throwing it across the middle? He's about to. A lot. So be prepared for that. Um, but I think at the running back position, keep your eyes open for Javante Barnes. Everybody says he looks like a creative player. Like he's coming off that foot surgery and he got 
bigger, like muscle wise. He's probably going to end up having to take tests on a weekly basis just because of how big he said he's gotten. I've looked at his pictures. I'm a little terrified too. He might be the, I, we should have 2000 yard rushers based upon Levy's system. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm going to pass the ball back to y'all. Any other final thoughts around fall camp? Any other positions or people you want to talk about while I grab these questions? I mean, I, I would I would say this is we don't have, I mean, based off of everything that we're hearing, we don't have a Justin Broyles or a Pat Fields. We don't have that guy on the field that everybody's like, why the hell is he showing out there today? Maybe McKay Mattower. Like that might be the only spot. But again, we have an absolute um, slew of people who are going, you know, if somebody gets dinged and they got to come in for a half, there's not going to be fall off. There's not going to be fall off. And the, the, the CD that we got is uh, I mean, is absolutely uh, you know, we're going to see guys who are really, really, really good that are going to have to leave. They're going to have to transfer because, you know, when you've got seven, eight guys at freaking safety slash cheetah that, you know, are vying for playing time. Again, you're, 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 you've got most of these guys who are you're going to the coach staff and say, listen, I've done everything that you've asked, everything that you've asked. And I've made plays. When's my time? When's my time? And it's not, it's, it's not the, um, it, like in the past where you have a lot of guys who think that they are, uh, they are owed playing time. These guys are putting in the work and they're doing it on the field and they're doing it off the field. And so that mentality is, is going to be phenomenal and and you're going to need it because you can't go in with a strong, you know, 22 only in the sec. I mean, yeah, I I got you there. JP Trav, any final thoughts? We're going to wrap this bad boy up. We're coming up on about hour 15 and I know everybody's got dinner in their, in their minds. Everybody, Uh, uh, just be mature tomorrow. Yeah. Remember, it's not over. Just be mature. They're going to try and bet you because if there's one thing Mizzou fans are good at, it's trolling. They've done a very good job of that. that is, yeah, I've been impressed. That is but don't true. take the bait. Don't take the bait. Yep. Don't take the bait. We so um, we'll see how it goes. It's it honestly it could still go our way. I have no doubt. I maybe have, have a I don't know a hunch that the OU staff will talk to the Winaries at some point tonight. Um, call it a hunch, but it's, you know, it's not over until the fat lady sings. It's not over until the pen hits paper. So, uh, I want to shout out everybody in the comment section. Appreciate most of you. Um, and thank you for hitting the likes. Yeah. Thank you, JP. Final yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Be like trash said, be, be cool tomorrow. Don't trip. Even though we know some of y'all going to show y'all butts on Twitter, but it is all right. <laughs> X, sorry, forgot. X. It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> two other things that I want to mention that just be funny. You know, let's let's lighten the mood before we leave. One, you know, Travis just became public enemy number one. I don't even know if we're gonna have no people on the show on Thursday because I don't know if y'all know what he said in the comments earlier, but he said we only got ninety eight likes. That's why Lincoln Riley left. Or no wonder Lincoln Riley left. And I was like, oh no. And so you know, <laughs> they're like, didn't you teach Lee Riley how to grill? It's a mess. It's a mess. But I thought that was hilarious. And then, did y'all see the OU uh, mic'd up today with Grayson? Yeah, yeah. that was funny. Grayson's crazy. He, he, he said, I'm risen him up in Spanish. He's he's a fool. He's a fool. I said, where I, I was talking to him earlier. I said, where'd you even come up with that? He said, oh, I don't know. I'm just I'd be fooling out there. But he's, he said he got his business though, so don't worry. <laughs> they're all having fun so y'all need to too so jp trav this is the show thank you so much for pulling up check out the jp and trav show thursday nights is that going to be y'all's permanent time now yes yes we're on thursday nights full time now thursday nights full time make sure y'all pull up i'm usually always there most time listening in the background of my son's practice yeah. but uh definitely make sure y'all pull up and check it out and this is the sooner or later sports show thank y'all for joining us hit that like button if you're new to the channel subscribe we'd love to have you join the family and uh yeah we will chop it up with everybody a little bit later then peace